Hi guys, welcome to another Flight Deck 2 Sim tutorial. In today's video, I'm just going to simply show you how we set up a brief and ILS approach using my company's operating procedures. Now, we're currently en route from Birmingham in the United Kingdom to Barcelona in the northeast of Spain. Currently cruising at flight level 390, and we just have about 200 miles before top of descent. Well, you can see there, 187 miles. So this is a kind of appropriate time in which the pilot flying would hand over control, set up and brief the approach to be flown today. Now, I've already set it up. All I'm going to do is brief you guys exactly how I'd brief the pilot monitoring in this sector, how I'm going to fly this approach. Now, the first thing we talk about is uh, the information on the descent page. So if I bring up the FMC here, select descent, you can see here I've got 250 knots below flight level 100. Now, that's well known uh, as a speed restriction to, tr uh, to try and maintain below that altitude. And if we put that in the FMC and use VNAV, it will ensure that we maintain that restriction. On the forecast page, we essentially copy this information from the operational flight plan. So I'm using live weather and live time. You can see here the forecast winds from the operational flight plan on the left I've just copied into the FMC and I'm using live weather it's quite a nice uh, evening in Barcelona it's clear skies temperature of 8 degrees light northwesterly wind and the QNH of 1011 now because it's 8 degrees and at sea level the ISA uh, standard ISA temperature at sea level is 15 degrees so 15 minus uh, 7 equals 8 degrees, so that's why we have minus 7 there, and the forecast Q&H of 1011. Now, all that information is important because that ensures VNAV provides the most accurate guidance uh, during the descent to ensure that we stay on profile throughout the uh, approach. Now, for you that, uh, uh, for, for those of you who are, sorry, unfamiliar with Barcelona, we have three runways there. We've got 25 right, 25 left, obviously the reciprocal runway, and runway 02 and their reciprocal runway. Now we can expect runway 25 right today uh, based on the forecast conditions. It's what they're currently using today right now so flying in live time uh, and all the approach uh, I've flown and briefed is based on that runway so the first thing I would then show the pilot monitoring I've, uh, is the fix page uh, so you can see they have selected runway 25 right and for those of you who watched my other tutorials I've just I've been, uh, explained in length what these different distances are so all I've done is put a slash and then a 10 uh, that's the point at which we select flap 1 if I go to the plan page here and step through it, it'll make it a little bit easier for you to see actually. Uh, there we go, there's Tebla. There we go, back to fix page. You can see there, there's the 10 mile ring. That's the point at which we select flap one, 10 miles from the runway, four mile ring. That's the point at which we go gear down flap 15. And then I have another ring here, which is 117. Well, that's uh, simply our flight level times three. So flight level 390 times three. It gives us 117 miles and that equates to the approximate place at which we start top of descent and you can see it there there's the top of descent point and there's the 117 mile ring so three times your height is a really nice uh, kind of rough way to work out if you're on your vertical profile or not uh, next thing we do is brief the standard terminal arrival now you see here on the operational flight plan, uh, the flight ends at Pumal, and then it says we can expect ILS runway 25 right. Now there's only one star from Pumal that goes to both runway 25 left and 25 right, and that's the Pumal 3 Tango. And you can see, uh, see here on the departure arrivals page, if I select arrivals, there's the ILS 25 right. You can already see I've selected the Pumal 3 Tango and uh, we're using the Charlie Lima Echo Transition. Now I don't need to execute that because I've already put that in pre-flight based on the forecast conditions. Now when we brief the start it's very important uh, to carefully identify uh, each waypoint during the briefing and the setup and to bring out any pertinent points. So if I bring the FMC up here's the ND. We'll zoom up here and we're just going to make sure it's true to what the star says. So Here's the star on the left hand side, When I, if I was briefing this I'd firstly identify that it was the correct chart, so 40-9 it's the star for runway 25 uh, right in this case and it's the Pumal 3 Tango. The first waypoint at Pumal, we've got flight level 250 below, that checks in the FMC. We next have Charlie Lima Echo DME 35 miles, well there's holding there uh, if it's very busy but we don't expect any holds today. 
Next waypoint is uh, D327J or Juliet. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means on the 327 radial from uh, Charlie Lima Echo VOR at a distance of 10 miles, we need to be at flight level 110. Now, you can see here that's not in the FMC, which is sometimes the case. They don't always add up. So we need to put that in manually and then execute to ensure that we comply with the star restriction if we've not been cleared onto radar vectors. Next waypoint then is Charlie Lima Echo, which excuse my Spanish, is the Calelia uh, VOR. Uh, someone who's Spanish have to tell me how that sounds, so if I've done that correctly. Uh, but that is the initial approach fix. So if we've not been cleared for the approach, you can see there's a warning, do not proceed beyond the initial approach fix without ATC clearance. So if we get to this waypoint here, it's really busy, we can't check in, we must enter the hold. But typically we would get contact and we'd get then, uh, we'd then get radar vectors after that point onto the ILS. But you can see here, yep, we've got the waypoint in there, flight level 70 above, and that complies with the uh, restriction there. Now, it's a bit of an SOP for my airline and also a requirement for most Spanish airports that after the initial approach fix, we must not exceed 220 knots. And it's a nice sensible speed to fly. So what I'm going to do at the Charlie Lima Echo is put 220 knots or below. And that will ensure the VNAV profile will allow us to comply with that speed restriction and still descend with idle thrust. Now, just before we finish briefing the star, it's very important to mention the MSA. Uh, that ensures that, uh, sorry, the MSA or the minimum sector altitude ensures that we are free of all obstacles and terrain so long as we're above that height. So you can see here the MSA to the north of Barcelona where we're approaching is 5,700 feet. So as long as we're above that height within the 25 miles of Barcelona, we're going to be clear of all obstacles. If you're below that height, you can't guarantee that you are clear of obstacles. And if you ever lose your situation awareness, you must climb to that height uh, as a minimum to ensure you're going to be free of any terrain. So that's the star briefing complete. We'll now bring up the ILS chart and we then brief the ILS to the uh, pilot monitoring. Now, the first thing we do is start right at the top here, which is the really important uh, point, which is the briefing strip. It's got all the vital information required for, uh, to fly the approach. So you can see here, the first thing I would do is identify the chart. So 50-10. Um, which is the chart number and then we can have a look at the ILS frequency approach so we can see here for the ILS we need 109.5 so you can see here down on the nav display oh sorry the um, nav 1 and nav 2 box I've got 109.5 tuned as the active ILS and on the standby frequency I've got 116.7 which is the Barcelona VOR as a backup for the missed approach Next thing I need to do is confirm the final approach track, which in this case, looking at the chart, is 245. And you can see here that's set on the MCP selectors both sides. And you can also double check that in the FMC on the init ref page. You can see here 1095245. Five. Now it's important that that is set in the nav boxes both 1 and 2 and also the MCP courses otherwise the approach function won't work you won't be able to fly the ILS. Now next thing on the briefing strip is the aerodrome elevation that's 14 feet looking at the overhead panel I've set that to we'll set that to zero which is the nearest height to 14 feet and the next thing you can see there the transition altitude is 6,000 feet well you can find that on the descent forecast page go to send forecast and there you go transition level six zero below that height we must have the QNH set but in my company as soon as being being cleared to an altitude we immediately set the QNH we don't wait until we've been uh, cleared but uh, well we don't wait until we pass the transition altitude in that case so that's the top of the briefing strip the next thing we then brief is the routing after the Charlie Lima Echo VOR if you remember that's where the star terminated so we'll go back into the FMC bring up the ND here and step through the waypoints if we go to plan there we go and you can see here there's Charlie Lima Echo now typically in Barcelona from operational experience you'd get radar vectors onto the ILS from that point but if we didn't get radar vectors we just confirm that the routing is correct as per the chart so after Charlie Lima Echo you can see on the chart on the left hand side we route uh, off the 222 radial for a distance of 11 miles so you can see here 222 11 miles and then after that point we get to Tebla and after Tebla that's on the localizer and uh, you can see here the platform altitude here on the chart is 2300 feet and you can see here it's at or above well that ensures that we don't level off we continuously descend and just to show you here if you go to delete here temporarily delete the restriction it should come up with the height at which we should be at Tebla should do uh, not sure why it hasn't appeared there but 
what usually happens is it will show you the actual height at which it, uh, you appear there, but it's not working today. But yeah, you can change any restriction before the uh, to an at or above to ensure that you maintain a continuous descent. You don't level off uh, essentially there. After then, Teblet will um, intercept the localizer and glide path, the platform altitude of 2,300 feet, and then we descend on the ILS to the holding point, uh, or the threshold, I should say, for runway 25 right. Now, mentioning again there, looking at the chart, there's some points there. It mentions that VOR is required, DME is required for the approach, and we also discussed the missed approach procedure. So uh, if we're not visual, we would fly straight ahead, you can see here, to 245, 5 miles off the Barcelona VOR. You can see here 245, and then we have Echo. Echo represents 5 miles because it's the fifth letter of the alphabet. And then we make a slight left turn, intercept the 242 radial from the VOR, and then for climbing up to an altitude of 3000. Now, the other important thing which I've not mentioned off the approach chart is the minimums. Again, you can see here, it says here, for an ILS DME approach for a Category C aircraft, which is what the 737-800 is, the minimums are 235 feet. And you can see that's what I've got set here on the PFD. If we're not visual with some elements of the approach lighting system or the runway at this height, we must conduct the missed approach as we just brief, climbing straight ahead to 3,000 feet. Now, other things it mentions here on the approach chart, you've got the landing distance available of 3,352 metres. It's a 60 metre wide runway. You've got Pappies here at 3 degrees, which matches the ILS. And that FALS, that means full approach lighting system for a Cat 3 approach. So it's got all the bells and whistles onto runway 25 right into Barcelona. Okay, so now we've briefed the descent, the arrival, the approach, and what we're going to do in the event of a missed approach. Let's now talk about what we're going to do in the event of a landing, which is what we intend to do after every single flight. Now, the first thing we need to work out is our landing performance, and also do we have sufficient fuel to get to an alternate. Now, if I bring up the FMC here, you can see on the progress page we expect to land in Barcelona with 3.5 tonnes. Now we check that against our alternate to make sure we've got enough. In this case it's Girona, which is quite close to Barcelona and we need about 2.5 tonnes. So we've got a tonne extra of fuel. Now we use as a conservative figure uh, 2.4 tonnes now, so we've got nearly 25 minutes of holding fuel before we have to initiate a diversion. Now, you can see then, uh, currently the fuel on board is 4.4 tonnes, we will be landing in Barcelona with 3.5, so we're going to burn another 900 kilos. Now, remember that figure, we go to the init ref page and we then subtract 900 kilos from our current gross weight to work, our, uh, work out our actual landing weight. So if we put 57.7, that's our actual landing weight today. Now, on the left hand side here, you can see the Boeing OPT app. This is what we uh, use to calculate our landing performance. So you can see here, uh, I've just basically spat out, uh, spat in all the information from the ATIS or live weather or the META. Uh, Barcelona, runway 25 right, there's all the weather information. I'm going to use flat 30 today, uh, anti-ice off, all the normal breaks. And you can see here, what it's given us with the landing weight of 57.7 tonnes with flat 30 is our approach speed of 144 knots and all the order break settings. Now, how do we work out which order brake setting to use. Well, it's really important to know where we expect to park. Now, when we approach airports, we try and contact our handling company and they will tell us what stand we're on. So let's use a fictitious stand in Barcelona. There's absolutely hundreds, but uh, typically where my company operates, we park in Terminal 2, which is to the north of runway 25 right. And let's use stand 122 as an example. Now, if you look at 25 right, you can see there's an exit there, Papa 6. Now, that's going to be the most efficient one to exit at uh, because it's going to give us the shortest taxi distance. But we need to work out what the landing distance is for runway 25 right to the vacate at Papa 6. Now, if you look at the aerodrome uh, information, you'll find the information you need to, uh, or, or to work out the stopping distance. And you can see here it says to vacate at Papa 6, it's a distance of 2,053 metres from the threshold of runway 25 right. Now, armed with that information, we can go back to the Boeing OPT app and we can see there, right, what order break setting do we have? There you go, order break to 2,111 metres. That's pretty close. That's only 60 metres difference. So I would say to the uh, pilot monitoring, right, I plan flat 30, order break 2, and vacate at Papa 6. All right, so you can select flat 30, order break 2, 
and then we'll plan to vacate at Papa 6 and we'll use um, second detent reverse uh, typically we'd use idle reverse if we had a long turnaround or the last flight of the day but uh, if you had a quick turnaround say 30 minutes or so the brakes can get quite warm you'd actually want to use reverse for us to reduce the temperature of the brakes on landing just to finish off the briefing then we'd simply say then after Papa 6 we'd vacate to the right then it'd be a very short taxi via Juliet November onto gate 122 now Another thing I'd mentioned uh, to the pilot monitoring was any threats associated with the airfield. So you can see they're very complex taxi routing. Uh, I'd stress that as an important point uh, as well. And it is a short taxi and also Spanish ATC. They can talk very quickly. If you're non-native like myself, it can be a little bit difficult to understand. Okay, so that is essentially uh, the briefing. Once the briefing's complete, you then hand over control or pilot monitoring, who's currently pilot flying, would hand over control back to the pilot flying for this sector, uh, telling him what modes are engaged, if there's been any changes, and then he'd call for the descent checklist. Now, descent checklist on the control column is identical to uh, mine and the company. So the first thing it says here is pressurization, land altitude. Well, we'll confirm it's correctly set. So remember, the uh, elevation was top of the head I can't remember let's have a look at the chart uh, 14 feet so you can see we've got zero feet set anti-ice is the next point here as required so it's not required or offed we then have approach briefing and fuel well that's been discussed we've got sufficient fuel to get to alternate Girona and the IS and altitude bugs so what we're checking here is that we have the VREF set of 139 and the minimums 235 set and the descent checklist is complete Okay guys, that was a full briefing uh, for an ILS approach using my company's operating procedures. That's exactly how I would have briefed this approach this evening if I happened to be flying into Barcelona this evening. Um, I hope you found that interesting and learned something new. If you have any questions about how to set up a, an approach, please feel free to leave that in the comments section. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and subscribe, fly safe, and I'll see you again for another tutorial in the very near future. Bye bye.